in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit as we celebrate this eighth day of our Christmas octave, the celebration of the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God, the Theotokos, the God-bearer. By the way, Happy New Year, everyone. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that what we experience in intercession of her, through whom we have been found worthy, to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God bless us in his mercy. May God bless us in his mercy. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your ways be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. May God bless us in his mercy. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on earth you guide. May God bless us in his mercy. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us. May all the ends of the earth fear him. May God bless us in his mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then also an heir through God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about the child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight maids are milking, seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the most obnoxious of all Christmas carols, the 12 days of Christmas, written somewhere I believe around 1780 in England, I think between the years 1558 and 1829. The Catholic Church was actually outlawed in England, publicly or privately. Catholic Englishmen were forced to teach their children the basics of the faith in their homes, and it is urban legend that this song was code for the basic teachings of the Catholic faith. Whether this is true or not is irrelevant. I do love the symbolism between the days of Christmas and the teachings of the faith. My true love is my God himself. Me is every baptized person. God gave to every baptized person the following gifts. The partridge in a pear tree is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. For a partridge to feed its young, sometimes it would draw blood from itself so that the young could eat, just as Jesus Christ did for our salvation. Two turtle doves, the Old and New Testaments, the Old and New Covenants, sacred oaths made with God by us and fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Three French hens of the theological virtues of faith, hope, and and Christian charity. The four collie birds, or blackbirds, or calling birds as we call them, are our four evangelists, our four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I teach, I teach students in the university. We have three cycles of readings of Sundays, A, B, C, associated specifically to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John we use during the season of Easter and during some uh, weeks in Mark and usually during a lot of our feast days, including Christmas. Five golden rings are the five books of the Pentateuch, the Torah, the Torah, the law of the Jewish people, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the 613 laws that have been established for a good, faithful Jew to follow. Six geese laying are associated with the six days of creation, the seven swans of swimming are associated with the seven sacraments and the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, counsel, understanding, knowledge, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. The eight maids of milking are the eight beatitudes found in the fifth chapter of Matthew's Gospel. The nine ladies dancing are associated with the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The ten lords are leaping are associated with the ten commandments, which are followed by a good Christian, by a good Jew, and by a good Muslim. Eleven pipers piping are associated with the eleven faithful apostles, and the twelve drummers drumming are the twelve points of doctrine found in the Apostles' Creed. Now, according to the PNC's bank's annual Christmas price index. 
if we actually bought all those things over and over again, they would say that you would have to spend almost $40,000 to accumulate all those gifts that we are supposed to be giving our true love if we took the song literally. We also know that the gift given to us through the Blessed Mother is incalculable. It's priceless. It's the gift of God coming down into the world for the sake of our salvation. 1600 years ago, a man named Saint Cyril of Jerusalem gave this number eight a great significance in the church. For Cyril saw the number as a symbol of completion to a cycle of events. For Cyril, the eighth day represented an end of an octave, a time of intense prayer focusing within the church on the, this important event. In this case, the light of Christ, the incarnation of God entering the world, Emmanuel, God with us, this new Messiah that would lead us to the new Jerusalem, namely heaven. For the last eight days, the church has asked us priests to focus on special prayers and devotions on this light, not to put the gifts away, not to put the trees away as others have done, but to focus even more intensely on the presence of Christ in our lives and whether we're living it. Cyril talks about another octave during this week of Easter and Holy Week. This octave which starts with Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem for the last time, where people sing, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then at the conclusion of that week, those same people who praise Jesus are the ones who crucify him on the cross. We learn during that octave that this God incarnate into the world came into the world so he could suffer and die and take on the sins that all of us have accumulated so that we would have a chance for salvation. Today, the day of our Lord's circumcision in the temple. On this day, the name of the Lord is publicly offered. The name Jesus, which literally means the Lord saves. We honor this day in our church's year as a time of completion, recognizing the Lord as our Savior in the same way that the shepherds recognized the Lord in Luke's Gospel, the same way that Joseph and his virgin wife recognized the presence of the Lord in their midst. The Catechism of the Catholic Church explains to us why we recognize the Blessed Mother as the Mother of God, as the Theotokos, as the God-bearer. The Catechism states, On New Year's Day, the octave day of Christmas, the Church celebrates the divine and virginal motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mary as a singular salvific event. For Our Lady was the foretaste and cause of her extraordinary glory. For us it is the source of grace and salvation because through her we have received the author of life. The Catechism continues. The solemnity of the 1st of January, an eminently Marian feast, presents an excellent opportunity for liturgical piety to encounter popular piety. The first celebrates this event in a manner proper to it, and the second, when duly catechized, lends joy and happiness to the various expressions of praise offered to Our Lady on the birth of her Divine Son to deepen our understanding of many prayers, beginning with that which says, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. I believe in the signs and symbols and rituals. I believe that if we have an opportunity to teach the 12 days of Christmas as a way of catechizing our youth and adults, then we should do it. If we have an opportunity to teach people the importance of the octave, as St. Cyril of Jerusalem has taught it to us, we should learn the importance of celebrating these eight days even more intensely, not to put the decorations away, but actually to embrace and celebrate the gift that is with us. If we do that, if we understand what Mary was willing to do, we also understand why she is considered the Mother of God and the Theotokos, the God-bearer. As we talked about a few weeks ago, Mary is not just God's mother, she is our mother. Let us realize what she has done, what gift she has given us. Let us never put that gift away. Let us embrace it and share it with the people that we meet. Have a blessed New Year's Day. This is our prayer.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Mother Mary is an example of faith, hope, and affectionate care. So let us now take a moment to unite our prayers with hers. That the church tirelessly promote justice and peace in a world filled with conflict and divisions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That war, racism, discrimination, and corruption disappear from the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that orphans find solace and tenderness in the Virgin Mary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those with terminal illness, especially children, find healing and peace through the love of those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That mothers know the love and support of this community of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they find God's love in the hands of their caregivers, especially today we remember those on our parish's sick list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may find the promise of eternal life. There are two women who, uh, whose funerals we're celebrating this week at the time I'm taping this Mass. One is named Loretta, one is named Agnes, Aggie. We certainly want to pray for these two mothers and all those who have died, who have lived the faith of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions offered for this Mass, that they and their families may be embraced by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you have given us the Virgin Mary as our mother. Give us the grace to be worthy sons and daughters through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without loss of the glory of virginity, brought forth into a world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy and Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most holy day in which the Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, 
and to accept them as you once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with this sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life, for we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Amen. So this is the last of my four Masses in our makeshift chapel, and I am very appreciative of all the folks who have helped me put this chapel together. We wanted to make sure we had that Christmas season, that Christmas vibe, that Christmas spirit to offer all of you at this time. Whatever you do, wherever you are, please just know we want to be with you, we want to pray with you, we want to take care of you. And as we're getting on the other side of this pandemic, hopefully things will return to normal back in the church buildings. But as for now, God is still with us no matter where we are. As long as we are together, bonded by the Spirit, there is church and we are not alone. Continue to give us uh, phone calls if you need anything. A sunshine phone call, a kind word, a pastoral visit. Please know in this new year of 2021, we have not forgotten about you. That's why we're doing these online Masses. You are always with us and you are very much loved. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from your darkness a vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gifts of his peace and favor, and make you shares with the church in heaven. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Christmas octave mass has ended. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy New Year. God bless all of you. of the night, mother and child within heavens unite, light of God conquering sin, blessed is the parent who shows us the way to a blessed merry Christmas, a blessed holy day, each day is a blessing, raising the child in the world, things impressing, both holy and beguiled, caring, protecting. The God child obey For every day's Christmas A child's holy day Follow God's calling And doing his will Rising and falling The earth in flux Heaven still Child grows in stature And maturity Heaven's directing him To Calvary Mother is grieving the son's sacrifice. Cross is now leading us to heavenly paradise. Love of the mother has saved us from harm. The son completes mission and rests in her arms. The work of the spirit still guides us back to his grace. Words of God. Bring to us that holy place, mother and child, provide mercy today. For every day's Christmas, a child's holy day. Gift of the night, 
Mother and child within heavens unite. Light of God conquering sin, blessed is the parent who shows us the way. To a blessed Merry Christmas, a blessed Holy Day, a blessed Merry Christmas, a blessed Merry Christmas, a blessed Holy Day.